It's an interesting time to be a Dark Souls detractor. We're beginning to see people start having higher criticisms of the franchise. I've seen people talk about the lackluster music in Elden Ring, for example. I've seen people talk about like Dark Souls 2 and 3 and Sekiro and how they're kind of middling exclusives. Like Bloodborne has always had the reputation of only being as hyped as it is because it is a PlayStation exclusive. But I think most interestingly, seeing how Elden Ring is so universally popular, people are becoming critical of the original Dark Souls. Now, the Dark Souls was all uh, Dark Souls was always a mediocre video game, right? It was never the best game ever made. You know, uh, from the very beginning, people had problems with the pacing and, like, the, the visuals and, like, the stiff animations in the second half of the game. You know, like, bosses have, like, two attacks. Dark Souls was always, like, a middling action RPG that rose to prominence because all of its competition on PlayStation and Xbox were even worse, right? It was competing with Skyrim. Right. So in a lot of ways, simply being different and simply trying to like be an actual video game franchise made it stick out and made it relevant and made it popular, despite not being all that good of a video game. Right. It's kind of like how Golden Sun came out on the Game Boy Advance and it was like really popular among a certain demographic who have never played a game like that before. It's it's the same kind of thing. Right. Like Dark Souls. Is only popular. Because its audience has no idea what's actually out there. You know, they don't play other games. And more and more, I'm starting to see that the the primary criticism of the Dark Souls fan base, you know, the FromSlop audience, is that these people don't play anything other than Dark Souls, right? These guys take pride in not playing anything other than Dark Souls. They openly brag about not playing anything other than Dark Souls, right? And you see this in all uh, all sorts of ways all the time. You know, those two guys on the who did that response videos to my top 10 game ever, like you saw this, right? When they're doing this four hour long reaction to, to one of my videos and, and they're saying over and over again, oh, it's like Dark Souls. Oh, I've never played that. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Oh, I don't play that. Dark Souls is better. Like you really do realize that these people use their love of Dark Souls as a crutch for their lack of taste and lack of knowledge of other video game franchises, right? And this is becoming more and more obvious as uh, as these games get new and new, new entries and like more and more games start taking influences from Dark Souls and it becomes more and more obvious to the audience that there are games better than Dark Souls because, uh, you know, Monster Hunter was always better. Uh, Bayonetta was always better. Like, th there are lots of games that uh, are more fun to play and are more challenging than Dark Souls. But uh, the pervasive narrative is that Dark Souls is hard because the audience says so, right? Like, it's not because of poor design. It's not because of, you know, the, the poorly thought out mechanics or the choppy or the choppy combat, or, like, the frame rate drops. No, like, Dark Souls is hard because it's meant to be. It's meant to be the hardest game ever. You know, never mind that it's not all that poorly put together. It's very poorly put together, and that there are, are just so many better games out there. Like, let's just ignore all of that and pretend that everything about Dark Souls is amazing. You know, Lost Isolith, oh, it's meant to be, it's meant to be a terrible area, you know? <laughs> like, oh, that, that linear, uh, the Crystal Caverns, oh, you're, like, the fact that all you have to do is walk along completely straight, narrow platforms. You don't even have to fight a single enemy until you get to Seath, right? <laughs> like, that's, that's impeccable level design, right? When you, um, when you uh, every any every enemy that can be beaten simply by like swinging a Zwayhander around and having the correct build, oh, that's just that's just rewarding your knowledge of the game's mechanics and its stat system, right? Like all the criticisms that people have of Dark Souls traditionally have been swept under the rug under the guise that it's hard. But you know, with Elden Ring kind of usurping Dark Souls as like the big relevant game in the from a slop uh line, lineup right more and more people are starting to turn on the original dark souls they're starting to become more critical of it they're starting to acknowledge that like this game which 
for a decade has been lauded as like one of the best games ever made wasn't all that spectacular, right? In order to hype up Elden Ring, they need to destroy Dark Souls because we already know that when it comes to a popularity contest, you know, Zelda stomps Dark Souls every time. But like the narrative has been um, that like Dark Souls uh, is consistently good, has been consistently top tier, has like in- consistently been innovating and evolving, even though it hasn't, right? Uh, while Zelda is stagnant, boring, and derivative, even though it isn't. Right. Like the narrative was that like Dark Souls was constantly topping itself and becoming better and better. But like in doing that, in doing that methodology of hyping up this franchise, eventually the older games have been left in the dust. Right. I think Demon Souls and Dark Souls and Bloodborne have kind of been forgotten in this in this wake of like Elden Ring, Elden Ring like hype. Right. People are so adamant that Elden Ring is one of the best games ever made that the game that they supposedly loved back in the day, Dark Souls, has been completely forgotten. And I would I would like to compare this to how Nintendo fans treat their games. Right. How I, you know, New Super Mario Bros. U came out in 2011, uh, 2012, right? Late 2012. Like I, I'm making videos talking about how that game is great and how it's just as good as Super Mario Bros. Wonder and how that game gets a bad rap and stuff like that. Like I have always maintained that new Super Mario Bros. U is great. You know, you know, I'm playing like Super Mario Galaxy 2 again. I'm playing, uh, you know, I played through Ocarina of Time recently. I talked about how great that still is. You know, I, I'm doing all this stuff, right? You know, I'm talking about all these great video games all the time and still coming away with consistent opinions on them. Because I don't have an agenda. You know, I am giving you my honest opinions. I'm not just sweeping a problem a game has under the rug in order to make it look better, in order to downplay its issues, and in order to, like, pretend as if other games that came out around the same time, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, are not better than, like, are are not better than it, right? Like, you know, Dark Souls was never able to compete with Zelda, right? And I think over the past decade, that's become more and more obvious, right? Skyward Sword has been re-released, you know, hugely successful. You know, um, you know, Link, Link's Awakening got remade. That game came out in 91. It's 30 years old now, and it's still selling millions on Switch. You know, Breath of the Wild has outsold every Dark Souls game. You know, Tears of the Kingdom has outsold Elden Ring in, like, a month, right? Like, we don't have a, a updated numbers yet, but, like, uh, it's it's crazy. I remember when people were saying that, like, the DLC for Elden Ring would outperform Tears of the Kingdom, but, like, that's obviously not going to happen, you know? <laughs> like, Elden Ring couldn't even out, uh, outperform the, the first Zelda, like, the first Breath of the Wild, right? So it's, like, how exactly is Shadows of the Earth Tree going to outperform Tears of the Kingdom, a game that has outperformed Elden Ring in every single way, shape, and form, right? Like, Nintendo has shown, demonstrated, that they can put out better sequels more quickly than FromSlop, right? When you compare what Nintendo has done this year with, like, putting out Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Bros. Wonder, two completely different games in, like, a span of months. Meanwhile, uh, Elden Ring takes, like, what, like, five years since Dark Souls 3 to put out, like, Elden Ring, and, like, they can't even get a DLC out on time, right? Like, Nintendo Switch owners are, like, loaded with high-quality, amazing games all the time, and yet from Slop, like, oh, just wait five years for the next Dark Souls, like, every single time. And uh, I do think people are getting tired of it. Like, in a lot of ways, I think the, uh, the popularity of Elden Ring, you know is going to be kind of the the noose around from slop's neck because first of all they can't get away from the souls formula that, that's been a problem that's been evident since uh, Sekiro came out but uh secondly people are going to get bored of elden ring you know people are going to get bored of like the slow souls formula right like even now it kind of feels like people are coping when they say these are top tier rpgs you know, when the next From Slop game comes out, like, you just know that everyone's going to, like, be bending over backwards saying it's better than Elden Ring. And, like, yeah, there are going to be a there are gonna be a few holdouts who, like, say Elden Ring is better or say Dark Souls are better or even those hipsters that say Demon Souls is better. But, like, unlike Zelda, where there's, like, a nuanced, intelligent discussion as to, like, the positive and negative qualities of each game, like, 
the FromSlob audience needs to promote each and every release as the best game ever made in order to give the game's credibility. Because without this hardcore, like, dedicated, just obsessive enthusiasm for these properties, they have nothing. You know, I can tell you for a certainty that nobody would care about Dark Souls lore if it wasn't for Vadi Vidya and, like, the YouTube lore community. You know, that's why the Zanzibar thing became such a meme, because, like, it really was true. Because Dark Souls just is not engaging enough through actual gameplay to keep you invested in its story, right? It is boring. It is uninspired. It's dreary. Like, it's too padded out. Like, it's... It's just not all that engaging, and it's in itself contradictory in a lot of ways, especially when it when you include the sequels. So, like when you actually look at like Dark Souls as a game, as a property, like it just does not hold up. The only reason we're talking about these games in 2024, the current year, is because the fanboy audience cannot move past them. They cannot admit that other games are better than it, and more and more, it's becoming apparent that, like, the narrative is on the verge of collapse. You know, the instant that, like, FromSlop puts out a game that's controversial for the audience, that's polarizing, like, people are going to be split. Like, do we religiously defend FromSlop no matter what? Or do we admit that uh, that Zelda is better and that there's really no hope of from slop like ever competing right like it's going to be like whatever happens it's going to be the same situation as like bethesda as like bioware as like larian as as a cd project red like uh the industry props up these studios with the intention of them like usurping zelda's status as like the greatest video game franchise in the world but every single time they completely collapse it is insane to me that skyrim has sold like 60 million copies it's one of the most successful games ever made it was a cultural landmark of the new tens and how quickly it's fallen off right like the studio has never been able to replicate that replicate that success you know new vegas was a failure Fallout 76 was a failure. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online was a failure. Uh, Starfield was a failure, right? They have never been able to recapture the hype and enthusiasm from from Skyrim. And a big reason for that was that Skyrim was never good to begin with. They were unable to innovate on what like people who had never played a video game before liked about Skyrim. Because a lot of times they never finished the game or even understood, like, what the main quest was supposed to be, you know? Like, it's way too common for people to play Skyrim and then just kind of use it as, like, a life sim or whatever. You know, just wander around doing whatever. Like, getting into all kind of random altercations or whatever. Like, when you actually look at Skyrim as a game, much like Grand Grand Theft Auto, like, it fails, right? The reason these things are appealing to people has nothing to do with the actual design of the game. But... mm, but mechanics within the game that are appealing to certain demographics. You know, Grand Theft Auto has the cop killing thing. Skyrim has like the life sim elements, right? Like the immersive elements, right? But when you actually look at like the general structure, the writing, the gameplay, the mission design, like when you look at everything that like these games offer, like they just cannot compete. From a pure, like real hardcore gaming perspective, Zelda has stomped the rest of the industry for 40 years, and that is not going to change anytime soon.